Okay, so uh, today's video is coming to you uh, a lot sooner than I was expecting. I figured this project was going to take a while, but uh, I got an email from the same mic that helped me out with the, um, uh, the, the 2003 to 2004 ones, sent me an email that had the user manual uh, that I was missing for the XC161 family. I only had the, the data sheet and not the user manual. Um, the data sheet, nowhere in it does it reference uh, BSL or Bootstrap Loader. Um, so I assumed I was going to have to do go JTAG with it because the XC161 supports JTAG. So I bought the Mini Wiggler uh, to go in there and JTAG it. However, uh, he sent me the user manual and said, hey, I've already done that one before. It, it also uh, does BSL. So... We're gonna we're gonna do this one today. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, this is gonna go as I go. I have not done it yet, um, but man, Mike is an amazing guy. He, he knocked this out of the park giving us the other one too, because it it says it supports it. I I read through the data sheet or not data sheet, but uh, user manual, uh, and did it. But yeah, so uh, let me switch the screen over real quick just so you can see it. Okay, so here I'm in the data sheet that's uh, off Infineon's website for the XC161. Uh, and you'll see here a TCK, TDI, TDO, and TMS. Well, that tells you this thing has JTAG, because those are the JTAG ones. Uh, so uh, those are really the four pins you need to get. Well, you also need ground and a voltage reference with most of the tools. But yeah, that's pretty much all you need uh, to, to do JTAG. Um, but if you notice here, we have the RD pin and the uh, POL4 pin again. Uh, which, if you watched the 2003 and 2004 instrument cluster video, you know that those are the two pins we need to pull down to ground to get uh, um, into BSL. So we pull those two to ground and then just hook up to, uh, let's figure out where our UART pins are on here, because I haven't looked yet. We're going to look for just TX and RX. Clock. I'm not seeing it. We're going to use a control F. Uh, okay, that's TX and RX 1. Let's look for TX. Ah, TX and RX 0. There they are. Found them. Okay, so this one has two uh, UART capable pins, but these are the two we need. Okay. Now let's go look at the user manual. So user manual, 500 page long, and this is volume one of two. Uh, but you'll look here, table of contents, bootstrap loader. We'll go look, and it's the same deal as the C161, where we are going to pull down uh, POL4 and RD. Uh, it says OR in the thing, I was not able to do OR with the uh, C161. It says the same thing in the user manual. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull them both down to ground. It, it, it works. And then we'll just uh, hook up into TX and RX0, as I assumed. I figured it wasn't in one. Normally bootstrap loaders go to the first one. Uh, so yeah, it's got a lot of information we don't really need uh, for it, because uh, the reason why I say we don't need it is because uh, Minmon should, or yeah, Minmon should take care of it for us. So uh, we'll just use uh, Minmon for the rest of this, um, or Minimon, sorry, Minimon. But yeah, see, it also has JTAG in there, so uh, you can JTAG, and it does OCDS. But uh, I just care about. JTAG normally because it's got the I, IEE standard to it um, stays pretty much the same between stuff so I find it to be pretty reliable tool but in this video we're going to do the same thing we did in the other one so you guys don't have to buy two different tools you only have to buy one and your one tool is less than ten dollars so let's let's get this let's get this going and then this will enable the same thing where we're able to add steering wheel controls or remove steering wheel controls uh with no cost to us so and also maybe we'll get lucky and this one will also not have checksums in it which will then let us do modifications to it even though i'm zoomed in all the way you probably still can't see it so uh, I'll try to 
get a better picture of it before I end the video because these are just a smaller package of resistor than, than we're dealing with on the other one. So uh, I just did the RD pin this time instead of doing POL4 and RD, uh, which is this guy right here, and you're on the, the far side of it there. Um, and it, it goes into bootstrap loader, and I've hooked up my TX and RX now, which are these two little resistors here, and they're wired into this. So let's uh, switch over and try it out in Minimon. But yeah, I'll have to figure out something to do for you guys so you get a better idea of what resistors I'm hooking up on there. I might have to bust out the microscope to show you guys. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go try this out on the computer and see if we uh, successfully connect to it. I'll uh, be super stoked if this actually works. Okay, so we have Minimon opened up. Um, I haven't changed any of the settings from doing the, the normal one because I really don't know what the settings need to be for this one. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and connect and see what happens. Okay, uh, it tried to connect, but we did not get everything we wanted. Hmm. Okay, so uh, so far the only changes I've made where I, I just opened the default for this because uh, this is the XC161CJ, which is what this microcontroller is right here. Um, uh, I left the clock rate the same as what we were using for the um, for the C161, uh, just because uh, I haven't looked to see what the oscillator is on here. Uh, I just loaded all the defaults for it, uh, so. It's just loaded with the default. So I turned off all the other syscons other than this one, although I didn't see if this actually needs a syscon. I might need to turn it off. Um, and then interface, same settings as last time. Um, kernel, we loaded the default for it. So it's the XC1C1 default. Might have to change it to the full to program it, just like we had to do it with the C161. Um, I can't believe I didn't notice this in here. It's, God, this this whole thing with Minimon has been a big story of me just not paying attention, though. Uh, I really thought I was going to have to do JTAG because I didn't see the C161, um, or the XC161, sorry, in the settings when I first opened this and looked at it. Uh, so I, I really thought I had to use JTAG, but now it looks like this works. So uh, I bought the Mini Wiggler for no reason, but whatever. Uh, y you live and learn. Oh well. So let's continue on. Um, now that we have the settings, let's connect to it. Reset hardware now, I believe. Oh, I forgot to reset it. One sec. Let me do that. All right. Connect to it. There you go. We're now connected. Uh, so let's uh, clear all selection. You notice the uh, these are the uh, section labels here. They start with a C. So. We will go ahead and add selection and let's go with C000 through C01FFF. And we'll just read that out of memory and see what we get here. Okay, well that looks like the beginning of all of the the other ones, so we'll go ahead and just, yeah, this looks like a good read to me. This is looking like good data. All right, let's uh, just finish reading out the rest of this thing, uh, and I'll uh, upload what I what I get off of here onto my GitHub, and I'll have to find another one of these to, to pull the steering wheel controls off of to see if I can swap it around. So, uh, yeah, just... Okay, so uh, let's power this thing up and connect to it and see if we can write it. I made a, I didn't download another one, so I don't have a steering wheel control bin yet. Uh, I think I have another one of these around my office to get one off of, but I just made a subtle little change to it. So um, I'm just going to upload my little change and we'll see if this has checksums, if it crashes it, and we will also see if my change works. So, uh, first we got to connect to it, uh, then we got to select our area that had the change to it, which was in between here. So, clear all selection, add selection. It was C 
4,002C5FFF. All right. Now we need to then just click the program button and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it looks like we do need to change the kernel. Let's go ahead and change it to full. Oops, full. Activate. Okay. Now that means we have to restart it. So turn it on, turn it off, connect. All right. Add selection. Okay. And now let's try to program it. No, it still won't program. Hmm. I'll have to figure this out. Uh, okay, so I was uh, being an idiot. Uh, I'm sure y'all are all screaming at the screen right now. Uh, let me just change where I'm at. Uh, clear all selection. Add selection. Uh, notice we are uh, definitely off by uh, a, an integer here. Zero, four. And cause I thought that was too many Fs. All right, zero, five. All right, now we're in the correct area. And look at that. So yeah, it wrote zero bytes because I was giving it zero bytes to write. So let's uh, try this again and see if it works. I, I haven't actually tested it. I just realized I was being an idiot. Okay, so program. Looks like it's working. We're programming it. So I'll fast forward from here. And yes, I left uh, OBS in the background there. <laughs> I just realized that. I'm pretty excited to be doing this. So, okay, let me uh, just turn off. Uh, we, we just exit out of here. Turn off the power there and take it out of bootstrap loader. And we will see if we made the difference we were looking for. So, if I remember right, I was in the right sector of it. So, let's see. Okay, there we go, and let's just power it up. Okay, so let's see if it does it. It should. No. <laughs> Must have checksums on this one. Didn't let me change it. I realized it was not my flash to it, and it was not anything else. It was just... Having this hooked up at the same time, it wasn't able to communicate to that. So the um, uh, UART pins, uh, TX0 and T RX1, are shared not only for BSL, but it's also how it communicates to the VS VFD driver. So with both of these guys hooked up and the ground hooked up, it was just causing some interference there. So I I just unplugged some of the stuff and it'll it'll show now so let's go ahead and boot it up you can see it has some instructions for you on here there you go you're gonna subscribe so that's it we're able to write to it and read it through BSL um, and uh, this took less than 24 hours for this project to be completed i thought this was going to be another one of my long projects that was going to take a couple of videos and a couple of days to do but you know some people came in and helped and uh, made it really quick and easy okay i almost completely forgot to show you all the zoomed in of what resistors i was soldering to so this one on this side right here is the one we're going to take to ground this is this goes to pin RD on this side. It's five volt rail, so don't solder there. Solder here, so that way you have that resistance before you're pulling it down. Um, also, as you can pull down the whole five volt rail and it won't turn on. Uh, but yeah, so solder to there, and then just go to ground, and that will give you uh, pin 90 for RD. And then over here, I took them off and I already forgot which one was which. Uh, but it's these two are your TX and RX. I, I believe it was, uh, I believe the uh, top one was TX right here and the bottom one was RX. But I, I, I did forget, uh, and I'd, I'd have to go look again, but you know, if it doesn't work, just switch, switch them around. It's not that big of a deal. But yeah, these, these are your TX and RX uh, pins right here. So hopefully y'all are kind of oriented and can tell where I'm at on the board, but I will just kind of go across the microcontroller so you can see. So, you know, here's here's where it says Infineon. So that's that's this um, 
bottom facing uh, facing the uh, VFD and then this this direction sorry let me get the thing down there easy that directions towards the PR and D um, so yep TX RX and uh, your your RD those are the only three pins you need for this one so uh, yep that's I just want to show that real quick before I end it uh, I hope you guys like this uh, again down in the get uh, down in the description you'll find the link to the github it's the same link as the 2003 to 2005 uh, I'll start uh, pushing uh, bins in there or intel hex files as i get them uh, one thing since these start at address uh c uh <laughs> it's pretty the the intel hex files end up being pretty big for them um so i i've just been putting them in a zip on there but i've also been putting the bin but the bin you have to offset it so um uh, yeah that's that's really about it for for this video um so I hope you guys liked it, and I'll uh, see you in the next one.